Hi there. Welcome to another exciting session where we dive deep into one of the most powerful AI technologies shaping up enterprises today. Retrieval Augmented Generation, RAG for short. The global RAG market was valued at approximately $1.04 billion in 2023 and is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 44.7% from 2024 to 2030. It is estimated that 86% of organizations are opting to augment their large language models using framework like RAG because they want to leverage the LLMs to try and answer their enterprise specific knowledge. So in the next few minutes, we'll uncover what is RAG and why it is a game changer. What is agentic RAG and how does it take things to the next level? A deep dive into the RAGSense, an enterprise agentic RAG application I developed. And by the time you wrap up, you will have a clear understanding of how RAG and agentic AI can supercharge enterprise intelligence and completely transform the way we interact with the information. Let's get started. RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation is a revolutionary AI approach that combines retrieval based search with generative AI to provide more accurate and contextual relevant response. So here is how it works. I'm going to walk you through the step by step of this architecture. The step number one in this RAG process is chunking. Chunking means you take a large document like a big PDF file or it could be like some conference pages. You break it into small meaningful pieces. Too large, you risk missing key details. Too small, the contents get lost. So a balanced chunk size ensures an efficient retrieval. The next step is embedding. Each chunk is converted into a numerical vector representation, a process that captures semantic meaning rather than just keywords. So what is embedding? Think of embedding as a way to represent word or sentences as numbers so AI can understand and compare them efficiently. Imagine you have words like apple, orange, and banana. An embedding system might place them close together in a multi-dimensional space because they're all fruits. But a word like car would be placed farther away. Now consider a sentence, the sky is blue and cloud float in the sky. Their embeddings will be similar because they share related meaning. This is what allows AI to retrieve relevant information efficiently. The next process is storing them in a vector database. So these embeddings are stored in a specialized database is called vector database or something like a Pinecone or ChromaDB. So making it easy to retrieve similar information later. Now, once the data is there in the vector database, when a user asks a question, it undergoes same embedding process. That is, it converts a user query into an embedding and then it try to retrieve the embedding which are similar to this embedding. Now, because of the semantic nature of the query, you are retrieving only the information which is very close to or similar to the user query and then giving this context to LLM. Now the LLM has got a context which doesn't have previously. Now it can answer your question based on the context you have provided, right? This is the whole concept of RAG or retrieval augmented generation. You're retrieving information from the local or pine cone database, vector databases, augmenting them and so that LLM can actually use that knowledge context to generate the response. Now let's zoom a little bit into the two core concepts that power the RAG systems, embedding and cosine similarity. Embeddings converts word or sentences or entire document into high dimensional numerical vector that capture the meaning. Like as I told in the previous slide, word is similar meaning have embedding that are close to the vector space. This allow a model to understand the relationship between the concepts beyond the keyword matching. Like in the regular um, uh, systems database or you know, queries, you do a keyword matching. So embedding that are numerically similar are also semantically similar. So just to give an example, for instance, you have a vector called AI and you got a vector called machine learning. So the cosine similarity, which is a dot product of these two vectors, say is 0.99, meaning they are highly related. So if you compare, say, the AI with unrelated word, say, chair, 
the cosine similarity would be close to zero indicating there is no relationship so that is what cosine similarity helps so there is so basically cosine similarity measures the angle between two vectors which is useful when we care about the direction rather than the magnitude whereas there is another method of comparing called euclidean distance on other hand measures the straight line distance between two vectors and spaces maybe you might have studied in your high school like x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square square root of it right if two vectors are close in both angle and magnitude they are similar both in cosine similarity and euclidean distance however in the high dimensional spaces cosine similarity is often preferred because magnitude difference can be misleading for example two long but similar document may have a higher euclidean distance but still semantically similar so why embeddings and this cosine similarity is similar critical for rack so when user asks a question embeddings and cosine similarity help to retrieve the most semantically relevant information before generating the response because you are storing a lots and lots of data in your vector database so when user asks a question you just don't want to do keyword matching you also want to get the data which is semantically closer to the user query that's where this embeddings and the cosine similarity helps to retrieve the you know relevant context for the rag application now let's talk about agentic rag in agentic rag pretty much the the process of storing the data in the vector database remains same the key difference is when the user query when user queries a vector database instead of directly giving that context to llm we'll have another check in between by llm we go and ask llm i retrieved this context for this query are you able to answer the you this user question using this particular context then the llm might say yes or it might suggest you no but it gives you what tools to use it might say do the web search if it is web search it will tell you like what a search query or you might it might ask you to invoke a external api so this is where agentic rag will help you so that when you don't have the lot of times you may not have every information available within the uh, your database so in that case you might have to get the data from external sources it could be a web search it could be getting the data from uh, some api so that's where agentic rag will, agentic rag is all about getting the data from local ju judging whether that particular data can answer the user question if not go and get additional information pass both the internal knowledge which we got and also external knowledge from other sources to the llm and ask it to answer the question this is what agentic rag is all about now let's quickly touch base on the ragsense app i'm going to demo you now this is a agentic rag application designed to help to as a a enterprise knowledge repository so you will have lot of internal documents within the uh, enterprise like it could be some pdf files it could be some conference pages some sharepoint it could be some slack messages host of information will be there how do we get a meaningful insights for a variety of use cases by leveraging the power of the rag application so at the at the core uh, this is being developed using the python and then langchain being used for all the you know llm uh, coordination and then we use a pinecone vector database to store all the uh, embeddings and then to do the web searching instead of using duckduckgo or other google i am using perplexity because perplexity gives you more uh, contextual information it gives you more citations and references and the front end is developed using react.js and then the api layer is at fast api so uh, yeah now i'm going to before i go show the demo i will show you what are the different personas that could be used or maybe i'll walk you through the architecture of that application before i jump into the demo so this is the architecture of the rack sense uh, the data generation part so as of now i'm having two data connectors one is a local file system and the conference page 
we can add other data sources it is quite extensible you can just there is a common interface anyone can develop and then just do plug and play without touching any other parts of the code so all these connectors will invoke anytime there is a changes in their source system like adding a new file or you are having a, uh, a confluence page is being added they'll invoke a fast api which will go through a data processing pipeline which is as i told in the previous slide cleaning chunking and embedding and then the data gets stored in the pinecone database so on the retrieval part you are having a react based application which will invoke a fast api and then the fast api will pass a query to the you know using the again we query the embeddings once we get the data we'll check with llm whether the data is sufficient we will ask llm if the data is not sufficient give me the term you want me to search the web now it returns the search query you go and search the web using perplexity pass both information to llm it will it will answer the question so this is very similar to what i told agent rack we are just trying to get the augment the data both from the internal data sources also from external data sources before sending it llm to answer the user question so before we start the demo let's understand what with three personas which might be using this application so we are having one persona like a sales rep who's interested in trying when trying to do a client pitch by comparing the product to with the competition there could be uh, a customer success manager who is interested in looking at the feedback for a particular product there could be a marketing manager who is trying to explore the trends in the current you know market and then how they are relevant for this particular uh, product so here that's the reason where we are having this you know when, when you are having enterprise knowledge base the agentic rack can actually take these things to next level now they can actually leverage fully leverage the knowledge which is there in the enterprise with the help of a an llm okay let's start the demo of raxens an agentic rack application so before we start the demo i want to show like the three data sources i'm having so two data sources i'm having i'm having some set of pdf file this is for a fictitious retail company they have a product called a smart inventory manager and ai retail suite two products so we are having some documentation about the product features some other feedback the product received from different customers and also i have a, a confluence pages which any organization might have internally to have internal knowledge uh, as an in knowledge base where the some pages could have some product road map for this uh, you know as suite and they are also having some information about how this product is actually you know um, uh, compared against say, the salesforce or you know sap commerce cloud or microsoft dynamic 365 so assume we are having a company where they are having some internal conference pages and pdf files and again these are all real time like even if you add a new page here the conference webhook can invoke a fast api which in turn can actually take the data chunk it create embeddings and then store it in the vector database now in our demo we are having three personas right scenario 1 a sales rep as sara johnson preparing for a client pitch by comparing a product features with a competitors so you know just to save some time i have actually have already the uh, the prompt ready um, so now i am actually so this she is asking how does smart inventory manager compare to shopify and joho inventory in terms of features now smart inventory manager information is already there in this document it has got all the features and everything but we don't have the features of shopify and joho so we need to go and do an external search also so this is what is going to happen now when i click search first we are going to retrieve all the features of smart inventory manager from the pinecone vector database now we give this information to llm and ask for this question i have these context i got it do you, is it sufficient if answer is no then tell me what should i search so it will give you the search term also or search query also now we go and query perplexity get all the information and then we give all the information back to the llm to summarize and answer this question now it has came back saying that okay now it is comparing the features of smart inventory manager the shopify and joho 
and it's just not only comparing it is also giving you the sources like what exactly the sources it has actually sourced from some all the external sources link from where it referred it is also showing all the internal sources like what all the different uh, document pdf files what are the different you know confluence pages it has referred so this is what is happening but there could be cases where i don't require to go out all the information is there within my organization i don't have to search outside in that case for example that could be scenario for a a customer success manager who is trying to look for a feedback for a particular product now he is having a uh, he is going to ask okay what is my uh, feedback for this particular product okay so what is the feedback for smart inventory manager now in this case it just try to query from the vector database get all the information because this is only my organization internal knowledge base it is not available anywhere externally so all i had to do is go and get the information give it to llm which is going to summarize now you can see that we are having only the internal sources here there is no external sources involved there could be another scenario where some marketing manager want to compare the industry trends and opportunities to create a target marketing campaign so for example now there could be uh, a marketing manager who want to know like what what are the latest trends in the current uh, uh, retail industry which are and how does smart inventory manager addresses them so so and then if you in this case it require both internal knowledge source as well as external now when i hit enter here it is again going and getting first it requires the features what of the smart inventory manager now for external uh, the trends in the retail industry it is again going and doing a web search now it is combining both of them giving it llm to answer this question that is what is happening now now it is actually uh since that's what you could see some difference in latency also uh when there is external search there could be a slight increase in latency because it has to go and get all the information from all these sources combine them and give it to llm for uh creating the uh summarizing that are on answer the question or summarizing information now the, now we can see that that we are having both external sources as well as the internal sources now uh, before i end the demo i also want to tell you if at all you want to add a new data sources it's kind of easy extensible okay so all you can do is we can just clone this repo for example if you want to add a sharepoint or you want to add a slack or you want to add another internal data source maybe something like s3 also you want to add all you have to do is just go and uh, you know there is a, a data connector base is there take this class you just try to implement your connector as per this interface and come here and make an entry in this config mapping dot uh, json file about your connector uh, that's it you are good to go now all you should do is you can create a webhook from your uh, source system it could be uh, sharepoint it could be slack or it could be s3 just create a webhook from there which will invoke the api the fast api and then that api is going to read this particular mapping.json get the corresponding class and invoke and load data into pinecone so it's that easier so uh, this is about the demo um, hope you all enjoyed it um, thank you okay thank you that concludes the session thanks for watching uh, please feel free to comment uh if you have any questions i am going to leave the github repo in the you, this video comment section please feel free to clone that repo and then extend it or do any changes okay thank you